Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. Today's project is going to be this Olympic Spark. And uh, I've picked up this reel to go on a specific rod. Let me show you that rod. All right. This is uh, an Olympic rod that I've just finished cleaning up. And uh, it, when I got it, it was this dark green, but all the line on it was uh, black. Everything was done in black on it. Uh, even the ferrules up here were completely covered in black. So you couldn't hardly see the rod at all. So I redid it. I love the eyes that are on this. I have a uh, Head and River rod that has the same kind of eyes, and I've always loved that. That's one of my favorite rods. So when I saw this one with these eyes, I decided, well, this was going to be a rod I was going to get together and use that on my boat. So I spent quite a bit of time redoing this rod. And uh, I'm running out of room to show it to you. Okay, it is a seven and a half footer, and I'm going to be using it on my boat. And it's an Olympic rod, and therefore I went looking for an Olympic reel to go on it. Yeah, you know, it's upside down, but you can see it. I'll chop it and edit it in the video so you can see it right side up. And I'm pretty pleased with it. I like this rod a lot. Haven't fished with it yet, so I'm still waiting. But I went looking for an Olympic reel to go on it. And I chose this Olympic Spark. It's a VO1800. And I like the reel. It's, it's gummed up. It needs some work, so we're going to move on. All right, that was the rod. This is the reel that I picked up for it, and uh, it's a little bit gummy. It's a little tight, but it's not too bad. The uh, anti-reverse override works. The drag works okay. It is a slam bail, and it's a little sticky on it. Let's see if, yeah, it's not one to slam around. So yeah, that's that bail. Definitely needs a little attention. And uh, so let's get started on this. And uh, we're going to start off by removing this screw over here on this side. There we go. Put that on there just to hang on to it. Let's take a look at this. Okay, that unscrews and operates like it should. We're going to add... A little bit of oil right here. Maneuver it around a little bit. We'll put a little bit up inside here and a little bit down inside here. There we go. All right. Now let's uh, let's go ahead and take the drag knob off. Go, take off the spool. This actually looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what kind of shape the drag washers are in. Not very pretty, are they? Okay. That's a little dirty down in there this drag washer that's eh, mostly just it's got a little corrosion on it we'll clean that up uh, this one here is stainless steel it appears and so it hasn't taken any damage same with this one okay here's our eared washer and the thing is it looks like we're missing a drag washer out of here okay we got that one there is no drag washer there there is no drag washer there. And there's not another one in here. Okay, this should have this washer, then this washer, and this one, this one, another one of these, and then this one. That's missing one. 
So I've got to see if I can come up with a drag washer for it. And clean those up. All right, uh, let's go ahead and take the side cover off. How about that? It's a specialty screw. It's not a, it appears that that's a Phillips in the middle, but it's not. It's a little round hole. So definitely going to take the common screwdriver all the way out. Okay, we're going to remove the side cover. And I really want the main gear to stay in, so I'm going to give it a little boost. There we go. Okay. That's a little dirty, but not too bad. All right, here's our... pin for the crosswind block. And for some reason, there we go. It come out and out dirty but it looks okay main gear comes out and there goes the axle shaft well that was pretty simple there's our anti-reverse there's our spring if you ever need to see how this works it's nothing more this is a hook spring on this side i'll go ahead and unhook it for a second okay hook spring on this side Okay, and it just comes over, hooks on that side, comes down, wraps around, and then back over to the wall over here. Pretty simple. All right, let's go ahead and remove this nut. Let's remove the rotor. Oh, I just love snap rings. <laughs> Well, let's see. Maybe this one's going to come out easy for us. There we go, <laughs> finally. That's ridiculous. There. All right. Slide that off, slide that off. All right, that's got those parts all disassembled. Get this, put this back on. I'll be back in a second. Now, let's see what we can do with this rotor. Look at that, it doesn't even want to flip down once it's very tight. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can open this thing up and see if we can find out why. It's so tight. It could be just the bales bent. Could be a broken spring. Well, it doesn't appear that the bales bent because look at that. It's it's like a perfect fit. Okay, it just wants to sit right back on there. So that doesn't seem to be the case. So let's go ahead and take the other side apart. This is one of those rounded ones. So there's my little rounded screwdriver that I'm custom made. Here it is. Okay. 
definitely very dry. Okay, let's see what's going on this side. Do we have a broken spring? Or do we just have some caked up old grease? We have a spring that is not in its hole. Okay. All right. It appears at first glance that it's all rusted, but it's not rusted. It's all caked up full of old grease. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's going to take care of it. Once we repair that, get that spring into the hole where it belongs over there and then get it on. I think that's going to be fine and it's going to work again. Okay, but we got to scrub all these parts up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clean them all up and I will be back with you in just a few minutes and we'll put it all back together. Okay, we're back and we're ready to start reassembling. And I think we're going to start off with this pinion gear. We're going to take the pinion gear and reinstall the click cog on it like that and put this sleeve back on it like this all right i believe that's how that goes and then all of that is going to sit inside of this bushing you know what let me go see if i got I, no i know i don't there's no way i have a bearing that size that's a big bushing okay so let's go ahead and lubricate the sleeve that's going to ride on and the shaft that the sleeve is going to ride on like that and go ahead and slide the bushing on like that okay if you install this anti-reverse block upside down anti-reverse will not work it completely misses the anti-reverse override lever okay so make sure that that goes in with the teeth down okay slide all of that inside like that did I get this okay no that's the way it goes okay like that and then let's see if we can get this snap ring back in and i think it'll go in just fine it was the out that i had so much trouble with i don't really believe i'll have that much trouble getting it to go back in there's where the problem is all right that one although it is small is not small enough to fit inside the hole. This one goes right in the hole. Both holes. This one does not. Well, it goes in that hole. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this one in this side. There. Now let's see if that'll put it in. Okay, it's in, but it's not all the way in. So, we're going to take my screwdriver, snap it down, so it's all the way in, all the way around, like that. At that point, we're ready to put the rotor back on. Oh, first, we got to put this washer on. There we go. Now we can put the rotor on. With that in place, we can put this nut back on, like this. It's got a flat side and a rounded side. The flat side goes down. There we go. That's spinning up nicely. Next thing we're going to want to do is slide in the axle shaft. Go ahead and oil it. 
let's see, yep, it doesn't have, the main gear will come in and out with this or without it. Okay, let's go ahead and put a dab of oil right here again, where that slides in. There, that way it's well lubricated. Let's grease the pinion gear. Spin it around a little bit. Spin it a little bit more, there we go. Okay, let's put grease on the main gear. Slip the main gear in, like so. And now, we're ready to put this assembly on. Let's go ahead and grease up the back side of the gear now. Now, I do believe that someone has been in here before and they put this together incorrectly. There's a shim washer right here. And every one of this type of style I've ever seen has this shim washer on after you put this piece in. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it that way. Slide the pin in to the axle shaft, slide it on. Now, put your shim washer on, and it just barely overlaps. And that's what I was pretty sure we were going to find. Okay. But it wasn't that way when we took it apart. Let's put some oil on the main gear shaft to put some inside the bushing. Slip this on. And let's put the three screws back in. There we go. Now we're going to install this spring. And the first thing we're going to want to do is put some grease in behind it. And we're going to set the spring in with that little tag in. See that little end right there? Right there. That's got to go down in this hole right here. Like that. With that in there, we're going to come back and we're going to install this piece. Now what I'm going to do to make it easier is I'm going to take this off. There we go. Take this nut off. Take this lock washer off. I'm going to set this over to the side. And we're going to install just the arm. So that we're not having to fight all the rest of that trying to put it on. Alright, the other little tag in on the spring. See it right there? That's going to go into that little hole right there. Slide that in. Oh, and it fell out of this hole. So keep it in both holes. At the same time, and it came out of this one also. Let's try it again. Okay. Okay, now we've got to fight the wrestle. We're trying to hold that in place while we put this screw in. Now, if you have a wild hair and you wish to try this, make sure to put your finger over it so it doesn't pop out. Okay, we've got not, lots of nice tension on there now, which we didn't have when we started, if you remember. I'll slide this in a little bit more right there. And we're going to put this screw back in. Now, if you wish to flip the bale, 
you can do so. Okay. Let's set this screw back in. Like so. Put the lock washer back on. Put the nut on. And we don't want to tighten it down yet. Because if we tighten it down and then we try to move it out of alignment from where we tighten it down to put this other side on, it will cause it to bind. So put this side on first. There we go. And we're going to put this screw in. Once that's done, and this is in position, we need it in this down position right here, we're going to take and tighten down that nut like that. Now, when we flip the bail, it should trip. Okay, so flip it around. There we go. Let's back it out so you can see a little better. And it trips around. It trips. It doesn't hit and just stop. There we go. That's going to bring us over to the spool. Now, the spool, I told you, is missing a washer. So what I did is I went and found a washer, a drag washer. I did not have another one like the one that was in it. I have a felt one. So I'm going to put a felt one in the other side. So we're going to start off with this tension washer. We're going to put it in here with the uh, wings facing down. And these two are really heavy. One's just as heavy as the other one, so it doesn't matter which goes in. Put that one in. That's your keyed washer. Then, at that point, I'm going to put this phenolic drag washer in. Next, I'm going to install this eared washer. It's got the little ears. They have to go in those slots. There we go. Now, I'm going to put in the felt washer, and I'm going to oil it. And then I'm going to put in the last key washer. And we can push down on that a little bit. And we're going to install the snap ring. And I almost did it the wrong way. You do not want both ends of this being right there at the hole. You want to have one a little away from the hole like that. So that you can hook a screwdriver behind it to take it out later. go we don't need any oil on the uh, drag clicker if this were to snap off we could have make make one out of a uh, spring wire and attach it there but it's not it's working fine okay let's go ahead install the drag knob let's clean that drag knob up a little bit down, turn down a little more, oh yeah, it's got lots of drag, okay, let's go ahead and install the handle, And this Olympic is getting ready to go on my boat. And I was trying to decide what reel I was going to retire from the boat. And um, that was kind of decided for me when my Ozark Trail reel that was on a rod accidentally uh, slipped overboard when someone was throwing out an anchor. Okay. I have no anti-reverse. Why don't I have an anti-reverse? Okay, did something wrong. If you install 
this anti-reverse block upside down, anti-reverse will not work. It completely misses the anti-reverse override lever. Okay? So make sure that that goes in with the teeth down. All right. I'm going to show you what I did wrong. And then you'll know, as I've actually shown you earlier in the video, what I did wrong. So now you see why it didn't work when I got there. Now I pulled it back apart, fixed that, and because uh, you didn't do it while you were doing it. And uh, here we go. We've got the Olympic Spark VO 1800. Anti reverse works, anti reverse override works, our bail trips. And uh, works like a champ. Uh, bail. Our drag works and uh, that's going on that green rod that we started out so that Olympic reel is going on the Olympic rod and that's going on my boat going red fishing I hope you liked the video if you did hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button tell me what it is you didn't like about the video because I sure can't do anything to fix it if you don't tell me what you didn't like and uh, for now that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels signing out